Flo Speck from the Carmel Women's Club, and I'm delighted to bring you our program today via video. We used to bring them to you live, but of course we can't do that now in light of the COVID virus. However, we have a very special program for you today. One of our own members, Robin Winfield. Now, if the name sounds familiar to you, it's because she comes from a family of artists and they're all in Carmel. Her late father, Rodney Winfield, was the uh, uh, creator of the great uh, windows in the St. Louis Cathedral. Her brother, Christopher Winfield, has a gallery in uh, Carmel. And uh, following in their footsteps, so Robin has her gallery right in downtown Carmel. She was born in St. Louis and uh, spent um, and graduated from Smith College and also spent a half a year in Tokyo and brings her well-rounded artistic ability to us via uh, textiles, uh, photography, and just plain beautiful art. At one of her recent presentations, the audience was amazed that she was able to take something as common and ordinary as a doorway and create it into something so beautiful that the audience was stunned that it inspired such an artistic reception in them. So now let's go visit Robin in her studio. everyone, it's Teresa Basham in front of the Carmel Women's Club, and I'm hoping you're going to join me for a stroll through Carmel where we're going to meet up with Robin Winfield at her art studio. Follow me! for coming in and welcome to my studio. It's my gallery as well, but during these times, I haven't really been open because it's so tiny. Uh, but thank you so much for coming and I'm looking, I'm honored to be part of this program. And I just wanna say I miss everybody so much and I just can't wait till we get back to our regular programs and seeing each other and certainly giving everybody a big hug. So anyway, so um, my gallery is located here in downtown Carmel. I'm right in the middle of town, but I'm hidden down an alley. So uh, I think Teresa is going to be um, showing you the map or the path to get here. So, um, but I love coming in. I come in just about every day and I bring my little dog, uh, Louie, with me, and he keeps me company under the desk. And I work on my uh, paintings and my silver as well. <laughs> this is a piece of silver that my dad designed and made, and he taught me how to do this technique. It's called silver repoussé. And I am not very, good at it. He made it look so easy, but <laughs> but I've been doing some pieces here. These are earrings and pins and um, necklaces that I've been working on. So I design these and tool the silver. That's what repoussé means. It's um, to pierce the silver. And then I pierce this thin sheets of silver and then I fill them with a, a, a stabilizer or solder and then um, polish them and finish them. So that's another thing that I do. My main um, work is with the photographs and painting. 
and I start with the photograph. I take all the photographs and um, actually let me show you a bigger Alfredo's. So this is in Monterey. You might recognize Alfredo's. I love this building. I've done this painting a few times. They're always a little different. And so what I do is I take the photograph. I have it printed by a company that I've been working with now for 30 years. And they do beautiful uh, prints of my work and they laminate them so they're protected against UV rays and fingerprints and paint. And then I put the photograph on board. It has adhesive on it. And I put, put it on the board where I wanna go from. So it could be up here or it could be here or you know, it doesn't, um, it makes a difference where I put the photo. So uh, <laughs> then I build up the surface around the photograph with a spackle-like uh, material. It's called modeling paste. And then it gives me a nice surface to paint on. So then I start painting out from the photograph and each piece is different. And then this is a small piece that I, a little study that I did, and this gives you an idea what I can do. So here's the photograph and then I put a light in there, which I'm not sure what that looked like, but um, there's a little study that I did so um, that's how I work on these, um, on my pieces. I've been doing this for 30 years and I love doing it. I never get tired of doing it because wherever I go and whatever I photograph, it changes my work. And um, so I've been to Istanbul and I've been to India and Japan and just around the country photographing. And I'm always on the lookout for anything unusual, um, architectural details, and um, I love doing it. <laughs> Robin, what was your inspiration to create mixed media artwork? So I grew up in St. Louis, surrounded by art and my dad being an artist, uh, we went to galleries and museums and I just always was influenced by him and his work. Uh, he painted constantly, he did stained glass, he did silver, and he taught. And um, so I always knew I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't have a clear vision of where I wanted to go. When I was 15, I had my first summer job, and I made a, at the end of the summer, I made $100. And my mom said, well, what would you like to spend it on? And I said, I want a camera. So I bought my first camera and started taking photographs. And um, then I went off to college and was an art major and tried a little of everything. I wanted to explore uh, painting and drawing and architecture and sculpting and uh, printmaking. I love doing the printmaking, but I didn't still have a clear direction that I wanted to go in. So I went to work uh, with my dad on a big commission he had designing quilts for a bank to warm up the bank. And so we worked together learning how to sew and I that started me on a 10 year um, ex exploration of working in fabrics and painting with uh, with the different uh, textures and colors and beading. And I love doing that. I still love doing it. So I did that for about 10 years. And then I took a class in mixed media and that started me back painting again. And then I had my photographs that I wanted to use. So one day I stuck a photo in the middle of a canvas and I, I, uh, surround, I bordered it. I framed it with fabric and paint and ribbon and cardboard and whatever else, all kinds of found objects. And I did that for a little while. And then one day I painted it out from the photograph, which is what I do now. And it was just the biggest aha moment. It was so exciting. I couldn't wait to keep going with it. So that's what I have been doing now for thir over 30 years. And I've shown in galleries around the country and um, I show every summer in Massachusetts on the Cape. Um, 
I've shown in Nashville and New Orleans and galleries do come and go. It's uh, sometimes hard to keep a gallery going, but I'm determined. And so I have my gallery here. And once this pandemic is over, um, hopefully I'll be back in business here in Carmel. Where is your favorite and most inspirational place? That is a really tough question because there are so many places I've been that I really loved. Uh, Istanbul definitely was an amazing city. Uh, the architecture there is just fabulous. Um, I love Japan and all the different structures there. And I also love um, a lot of American cities. New Orleans is one and New York City, of course. So that's a tough question to answer. <laughs> Robin, what is your dream project? My dream project would be to um, project my work onto a huge city wall. Robin, what is your most favorite artist tool that you use? This is a start of a painting I'm working on, and uh, this is a photo I took at the aquarium. So I'm not quite sure where I'm going with it, but I'm starting to work out. And um, this palette knife is one of my uh, important tools, you know, just laying out the texture, and then I use my hands a lot as well. But um, brushes and acrylic paints, I try to buy them in these larger containers, but uh, I also use the tubes and um, I put them out on this palette, on the glass here. I uh, can work uh, different colors into each other right on the glass here. And then if I have leftover paint, I just use these trusty um, film containers and keep them. and. Uh, then I keep the paint wet by spraying it on occasion because the acrylics dry very quickly. Um, so those are my most important tools. Also, I use rulers a lot because I want to make sure the, um, the lines are all straight. And um, I measure a lot. I'll measure between the, the windows to keep it consistent. Um, so yeah. Those are my most important tools. Okay, so now I'd like to explain a little bit about my process. So I start with a photograph here. You can see this is kind of a clear focal point to the piece. And then I start working out, painting out from the photo, and I can make up whatever I want. There's no uh, blue, green, gray sky up here, but I put it in and make the whole composition work together. Um, this is in LA, at the LA County Museum. This one is a photograph I took in India. The photograph is right here. And then I painted over the doorways. So it's kind of makes it a little mysterious as well, what's behind those doorways. Uh, this is another one I took in India photograph is right here and depending on the lighting sometimes it's really hard to tell where the photo stops and starts also this one I painted over the sky to make it a little more consistent and um, and then I just work with the lines and the texture and the composition they're all important parts of the process so that's basically how I do it, and I have been doing it for many years. <laughs> what memorable responses have you had to your art? I just love seeing people react to my work when they discover that what they're looking at is a photograph as well as painting, because it's not always evident. And um, so I, I love the reactions people get. Do you listen to music while you paint? And if so, what's your favorite? I do listen to music while I paint. And one um, 
One memory I have is uh, when I first heard Lucinda Williams' Car Wheels on a Gravel Road CD, I listened to that every day and I painted an entire show to her CD because I just loved hearing it so much. Name something that you love and tell us why. I love to travel. I love going to different places and exploring uh, different cities, trying different foods, and just um, learning about different cultures. And I think if, if we all can do that again, it's not going to be too soon. <laughs> what jobs have you done other than being an artist? So after college, uh, I moved out to Cape Cod and raised oysters, and that was a, a wonderful time in my life where I learned a lot about um, shellfish and aquaculture. And I've also taught uh, children. I've taught ceramics to children. I've taught um, uh, art classes to uh, elementary school kids, which was a lot of fun. I've waitressed for many years, and um, uh, what other jobs? Um, can't think of anything. <laughs> Robin, how do you know when a piece of artwork is finished? That is a very good question, and sometimes you just don't know, but other times, it just, it gets finished and you know when you're done and um, maybe it's even 12 years later. I've worked on pieces for years at a time until I finally decided, ah, this is done. The next video you're gonna see of me painting is for a virtual fundraiser I did for the Youth Arts Collective of Monterey. And it was so funny because I painted and painted and painted for what seemed like hours, and then I watched the video, and it was 20 seconds. <laughs> so it was pretty fun to do, but gives you an idea of how I work. there. This is quite apropos. Okay. 
In Dublin's fair city, where maids are so pretty, I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone. Malone. As she wheeled her wheelbarrow through streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. Crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. She was a fishmonger, and sure it was no wonder, for so were her father and mother before. And they each wheeled their barrows through streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. She died of a fever, and no one could save her, and that was the end of sweet Molly Malone. But her ghost wheels her barrow through streets broad and narrow. Crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive.